Okay. Hello and welcome everyone to today's Mount Stromlo outreach talk on life story of a galaxy. Now, if some of you are wondering what a galaxy is, a galaxy is basically a collection of lots and lots of stars. And sometimes if you have been, uh, if you have been at night and uh, you have seen a huge stream of gas and dust in the night sky where it is dark or when you have been out camping, or somewhere where there's very less ambient light, like here, you would have seen this massive uh, lane of dust, gas, and uh, stars. And this is our very own galaxy, which is called the Milky Way. In this picture, we also see two other galaxies, which are part of our local group of galaxies, which, are, which basically go around the Milky Way. And there are they are here, this fuzzy thing here, and the second fuzzy thing here, these are called the small and large Magellanic clouds, and they're also galaxies. So today, we will be talking about Milky Way and uh, many other galaxies, how they are, what's their life story, uh, and all that in today's talk. It will go on for 20 minutes. If you have uh, any questions, please put them in the comment section, and I will get back to them after the end of this talk. Okay. So... Before we go into galaxies, let's first go about who I am, right? So I am Raj Sikhar. I'm a PhD student from India, and I work at the astronomy department at ANU. And other than that, I have hobbies, uh, which are motorcycling, hiking, and today I will be talking to you about life story of a galaxy. So to get a sense of how big galaxies really are, we'll start zooming out from a building and we'll be zooming out at a constant rate. And then in the end, we'll reach Milky Way and the other two galaxies that I showed you in the first picture. Okay. Now here we are zooming out from a building. Now we have slowly reached Europe, then Earth. And now we have got the moon. Then the sun, our big bright yellow sun. And as you zoom out further and further, into lots of stars and dust away, there's a Milky Way, right? So we got to Europe in around seven seconds. We got to Earth in around eight seconds. We got to Sun around 15 seconds. And to Milky Way in around 24 seconds. So that gives you an idea about if you're zooming out almost uniformly, how big the galaxy actually is. We have so many, so many stars in it. Now, if this is uh, an estimate of how the Milky Way may look like because we can't really look at it from outside. So we can only estimate how it may look like otherwise. So this, this is the center of the Milky Way and we are, and it has a big bar here and it has spiral arms with lots and lots of stars in the spirals. And we, the sun in the solar system, lie in one of the spiral arms around two thirds out. And the sun is 25,000 light years away from the center of the Milky Way. Now, if you are wondering what a light year is, a light year is a unit of distance. It's basically how far light travels in one whole year. And it's almost equal to 10 trillion kilometers. That's one with 13 zeros after it. Now, what's a typical galaxy made up of? So again, here's a picture of the Milky Way. Uh, and you see there's a lot of bright things here, which are stars. Then you see a lot, a lot of dark patches, which are dust. And of course, uh, we will already know that stars are basically made up of gas. So a typical galaxy is made up of gas, dust, billions of stars in a disk. You see, it's all very flat and circular okay and it, most galaxies have a big black hole in the center and we have something invisible in a galaxy as well not dust it's dark matter so uh, just to motivate dark matter in a short way it's if you look at how fast the stars are going around the center of the galaxy and then you calculate how much total mass is there, including all the stars in the big black hole in the center, that mass together cannot 
pull uh, the sun or any other star to keep on rotating around the center at the speed which it is going. It's like if you swing something too fast, then it should, the tug of force, gravity, which is pulling you towards the center, should give up and the star should be flung outwards. But then that doesn't happen because there's some invisible matter, which has a lot of mass, and it attracts the stars and keeps them from flying out of the galaxy. If you have more questions about uh, dark matter, I can take them up later on in the talk uh, or after I finish the talk. Okay, now Milky Way is a spiral galaxy, but galaxies come in many different shapes. They come looking like ellipses or they can look like pinwheels, like a ring, like a barred spiral. You see here, you have a bar in the center and spirals going around and really exotic shapes like jellyfish. Now, this uh, is a system in which uh, galaxies are classified based on how they look. Okay, you have different kinds of spirals and then where you just have, yeah, you have spiral shapes and then you have bars plus spirals, Milky Way is one of the bars plus spirals kind and you have ellipses. So this is something known as the Hubble fog. Now, how are galaxies formed? Now, here in this title, boom means Big Bang, and then after a lot of time, we had galaxies. So after the Big Bang, you see in the left bottom inset here, we have a lot of dark matter and gas that is distributed around in a web. Okay, it's, it's like a spider's web, and all these webs, they start falling together to the center in the form of, uh, oops. yeah, the matter and gas start falling towards the center and uh, they all get together and form really, really dense clumps. And once you have lots of gas and dark matter, some of this gas can fuse together to make stars. So, and uh, these stars, uh, and a lot of these systems of stars and dark matter come together and start making a big spinning disk, like you see here. In this figure here, you see we have made our own galaxy by just putting dark matter and gas in through this cosmic web. And then uh, at the center of it, center uh, at one of the nodes of these cosmic webs, we form galaxies. Okay, what happens uh, uh, as galaxies age? How do they, do they look any different? So young galaxies are often blue and they are more in the shape of a disk. They are either bars, uh, spirals or barred spirals. They basically have a very big disk component, okay? And they look very blue, whereas older galaxies look red. Okay? This is because when galaxies make stars, they make all sorts of stars, starting from blue, red, yellow, like the sun, all sorts of stars. But the blue stars, they are the brightest and the biggest, whereas the red stars are the smaller ones and uh, they are somewhat dimmer. So the blue, when the galaxies are young, they have a lot of blue stars and these appear really bright. Okay. Now, by the time uh, you, uh, by the time, uh, the problem with blue stars is they burn so bright and they have lots of mass, but they also burn really fast and they're gone. They die within a, a few million years Whereas the red stars, which are tiny, but they burn uh, very slowly, they can last up to uh, billions or even, uh, I think, trillions of years. So because of that, as a galaxy becomes older and older, only the red stars survive, whereas the blue stars die off. Okay, now we also saw some spirals and bars in the galaxy is uh, structures that we saw, but is it always the same stars that make up the spiral or is it different ones? So to explain that, I have this small video in which you see, if you follow the spiral, you see that stars are leaving and new stars are entering the spiral, whereas the pattern remains the same. So this is similar to a traffic jam, whereas when your one car slows down and then the five cars behind it slow down, but then the first car can always speed up and leave and then this jam that is there in the road, it just keeps on getting refreshed. So 
new cars which join behind start slowing down, which is in this case stars, and the old uh, ones which were part of the traffic jam, they start speeding away. So the spiral arms or bars are basically like traffic jams in a galaxy. Galaxies have some of the prettiest weddings in the universe. Okay. Now I'll show you a few pictures of that and you would totally believe me, I think. So here are mice galaxies, you see, uh, and then there's NGC 3921. Here's another pretty picture of the galaxy wedding. And then here we have a flying V of galaxies. It's amazing how beautiful galaxy weddings can look. And this is a simulation uh, from way back in 1995, which shows two spiral galaxies merging, and then it compares it to real world observations uh, of uh, galaxy mergers. So you see at different times, you can see that the, we are in different stages of the galaxy merger. So if you pause it here, you see that we see this image in the sky, which is basically at this phase of the galaxy merger. And then yeah, here you have this one. And because they are disk shaped and they can be in any possible orientation, we basically see galaxy mergers from all possible different angles. Now, galaxies can also sometimes look like rings, like this one with a big yellow center. It's called the whole subject and a big outside radius of stars and gas, or it can even look like a cartwheel with spokes running out from the center. Now, how ring galaxies form? There's one theory that says that you have a galaxy merger again. So one galaxy comes and passes through the center of the other galaxy. Now that sends a shock wave outward, which basically sends all this gas outward. And as the gas travels out, it the galaxy starts making new stars in this uh, gas around it. So that's how a ring galaxy is formed. Now, galaxies also like living in big, huge families with thousands of other galaxies. They're called galaxy clusters. Sometimes they also live in smaller groups and they're called galaxy groups. Okay, here is, this is called Pandora's cluster. It's because this is like, when you look at this image, it's like opening a Pandora's box full of galaxies and so many interesting physics things that we can learn from this, just this picture. So if you, galaxy families are not just composed of galaxies, but they also have a lot of uh, dark matter and a lot of hot gas. The hot gas is called intracluster gas, which is basically the gas between galaxies in a cluster. And this gas can be really, really hot. It can be as hot as a few million Kelvins. Now, uh, in this picture, you see in red that you see this very hot gas, and in blue, you see how much dark matter. So this is an example of where you have the nodes of the cosmic web. You have lots and lots of dark matter. You have lots of galaxies there. They like to live in big families, and they also have lots of hot gas between them. Now, this is another one, a uh, really pretty galaxy cluster, uh, which looks like it's smiling. Now, it is really interesting why this galaxy cluster looks like it's smiling. It's because of something called gravitational lensing. If you want to know more about gravitational lensing, drop a question in the comment section and I will try to explain it further uh, during the question session. Okay, of course, yeah, this does look like a happy family. Now coming to cosmic jellyfish -ism. I shortly talk, told you about this beautiful jellyfish galaxy. So how does this, uh, how, do you, how does a galaxy end up looking like a jellyfish? You see here we are developing a tail of this jellyfish galaxy, right? So if you look at this picture in X-ray again, you see that it has a humongous tail in X-ray. Now what has happened is this galaxy wanted to be a part of a big galaxy cluster. It wanted to join a family. But what happened is the family already had lots and lots of hot gas. So when the galaxy tried to come in and become part of the family, it had to get rid of many, much of its gas and stars. So they got shredded out 
basically got rid of a lot of its cash. Uh, for comparison, you can think of going really fast on a hot day in a convertible. So if you have your windows down and your roof open, all the hot air just comes in and takes out whatever air was originally inside your car. So it's basically the same as a hot wind blowing out the gas that was already part of the galaxy. Now here, now galaxies are not always very nice. They can also bully some smaller galaxies around them. Uh, if you remember this picture from the first slide, here we have our Milky Way, and here we have our two satellite galaxies. So these galaxies just go around the Milky Way like the moon goes around our Earth. Okay? Uh, these are the Magellanic Clouds, small and large Magellanic Clouds. Now if you look at uh, the a a area around our Milky Way in, uh, let's say, radio wave, in radio frequencies, you basically see a lot of gas uh, that emits uh, these lines and that's shown in red. What is happening is Milky Way is uh, pulling these uh, tiny satellite galaxies into giving up their gas. And you can see that. So in this video, we have the small and large Magellanic clouds. So they are the satellite galaxies that are going around Earth. And as they're going around, Milky Way is stripping them of the gas. You see all the red gas that is forming. At this point, see, this is almost exactly the same as the stream here, which we see now. So this gas was originally part of these two tiny galaxies, but our Milky Way believed them into giving up their own galaxy, sorry, their own gas. So yeah, galaxies can sometimes not be that nice. They can bully other galaxies. Now, death of a galaxy. So how do galaxies die? Now, this is a short poem written by Meissen. Uh, so it basically summarizes uh, how, how galaxies die. Now, uh, what happens is uh, galaxies, uh, they need gas to keep on making stars, okay? Uh, as, you, as galaxies grow older and older, they start using up almost all the gas and ultimately they have no gas left to make no new stars but and also most of the blue stars start dying faster first and then you are green yellow all those stars start dying off then you are left with the tiny red stars which are not that bright and then uh, you basically form no new stars but the red stars will live on for millions of years so in the end you are left with lots and lots of tiny red stars and that's basically the death of the galaxy. So, what have we learned today? Young galaxies, that's our first picture. They are blue because they have lots of young blue stars, and uh, which are the brightest. They have lots of gas and stars, and they are making stars continuously. They make lots and lots of new stars. Then, galaxy marriages. According to me, they are the prettiest weddings in the universe. Galaxy families, they contain thousands of galaxies and they make happy families. And old galaxies, they are red and old stars and they're basically almost out of gas. Okay, so we have reached the end of uh, uh, this question, uh, sorry, the uh, main presentation, so now I can start answering questions. Okay, first question is, is our galaxy a pinwheel? So I can go back to the relevant slide in which I show the approximate structure of the Milky Way. Yeah, so the Milky Way is more like a small bar plus a spiral. It's not exactly a pinwheel. Pinwheel means all of these arms start right from the center. That was the pinwheel galaxy. You see, it doesn't have a bar. It's a spiral galaxy with a small bar in the center. Uh, galaxies are generally measured in kiloparsecs. So par one parsec is basically like three light years. Uh, parsecs are more relevant as an astronomical uh, unit because uh, one parsec basically means you look at the angular, so basically we divide the sky into different angles and then 
we try to look at the same object six months apart, then we uh, see, oh, this object is now this much dist angular, angular, sorry, it's at a different angular position now compared to six months back. Basically, you're on the opposite side of the sun six months after. And then if they're separated by one second, it, we call it uh, a parsing. So it's much more important if you're using a telescope to observe uh, these galaxies, uh, it's easier to estimate distances in terms of parsecs. Okay, now the third question is, so the Milky Way would be a young adult, middle-aged, I would say it's middle-aged going into old age, but the Milky Way will st still has a lot of galaxies around it. It's going to marry Andromeda galaxy. It's going to merge with Andromeda galaxy. So when two galaxies merge, they get a lot of new star and they start making lots of lots and lots of new stars. But then after that, they also become old and uh, start dying. Okay. Uh, how fast do galaxies travel? It must take a very long time for one to pass through another. That's true. Galaxies can travel up to thousands of kilometers per second or maybe even faster. I have to check that actually. I can get back to you in the comments later. Uh, it must take a very long time to pass each other. Yeah, it can take up to millions or even sometimes billions of years for galaxies to pass each other. But when you're talking about astronomical time scales, given that the universe universe formed 13, billions, 13 billion years back, uh, 100 million or even a billion years doesn't seem like that long a time. Could a hypernova destroy a galaxy? I am assuming you are talking about supernova. Uh, so supernovae are basically big stars that explode in spectacular uh, and so it's basically a really nice spectacle. You it gives out lots of light. In fact, supernovae can outshine the entire galaxy when uh, they explode. And uh, but they can't really destroy a galaxy. If many many supernovae go off together at the same time, what they can do is they can send all the gas in their own region. They're like a bomb exploding in the galaxy. So what they can do is they can send all the gas around them out of the galaxy, but that's as much as they can do. They can't really destroy a galaxy. Speaking of colliding galaxies, uh, is our galaxy going to collide with others in future? Okay, for this, I actually have the right slide. I have a video of what it may look like when Milky Way and Andromeda collide to make uh, either we can call it Milkomeda or, or Milk Dromeda. Let's go to that video. And here it is, yes. So this is Milky Way and then we have Andromeda. And when it start colliding or they have a spectacular marriage, they first pass through and they come back and collide and then they make a bigger galaxy and they look red and yellow. Also, when get big galaxies collide, the big, big black holes in the center, they also merge to make an even bigger black hole in the center. Okay, the next question is, at the very beginning, what comes first? Dust, gas, or dark matter? Where do the dust, gas, or dark matter come from or start from? Okay, this is a very good question. This is a really good question. So, uh, basically, dark matter, uh, base, dark matter is formed in uh, cosmic waves of gas. Uh, sorry, of uh, the, these cosmic waves of dark matter, and then galaxy follows the dark matter because dark matter is a lot more in quantity. Uh, so, they form the biggest part of. They basically attract all the gas, and then as the gas starts falling in, and then they form small galaxies let's say some small proto galaxies and then once they start these some small proto galaxies will start merging to make a proper galaxy with the ga uh, gas and uh, dark matter and then they start they have lots of stars and then these stars they basically start making the dust so the dust comes much later so first you have dark matter then the gas comes in and 
then comes the dust. If a galaxy slings slotted another galaxy's gases, could the gas combine to become a giant star? That's again a really good question. Yes, uh, if galaxy is slingshot and other galaxies gases, it generally leads to an explosion of star formation. Sometimes some almost dead galaxies, if when they collide with another galaxy, what happens is all that gas that they had sometimes can come together and start making new and new stars. But then it will only be short lasting because that gas will finish up really quickly. Now, there's another question. Are there such things as kilonovas? Yes, there are. And if you want to have a look at some of our older videos, Georgie Taylor, uh, wanna see, did uh, an outreach talk uh, about supernovae a few weeks back. So you could have a look at that. And yes, kilonovas exist. So this has been a really fun round of questions. There are some really good questions. Okay, I will wait for one more minute. Uh, if there are more questions or we can end the talk. Okay, so there's a question, what would happen if black hole TON618 replaced Sagittarius A? So I don't really know what's the mass of TON618, but then, so the major gravi uh, force uh, of gravitation comes from the dark matter in the galaxy. So the central supermassive black hole has almost no function. Even if it was not there, we would still be rotating around the center of a galaxy at almost the same speed. So the major amount of mass is not in the black hole, but in the dark matter. So it doesn't really matter if the center black hole was replaced by some other black hole. Next question is, where do the dust in galaxy formation arise from? Because there are no planets or asteroids yet, right? Yes, that's true. Dust basically comes from stars and stars explode. Uh, they basically create, so stars fuse to make new and new elements. Right? So initially when, uh, like after the Big Bang and then when you started forming the first stars and galaxies, we only had hydrogen and helium. And then as more and more stars uh, started fusing these different elements together and then they started exploding, we started making the newer elements uh, and we started making dust. Okay, And then once we had uh, newer and new, and then what happens is when these stars explode, they try to mix all these uh, new elements that have formed, uh, they get mixed up together and if the stars explode, then that's really good because all these different elements from different parts of the uh, local matter come together and then yeah they come uh, together and uh, basically then they can uh, make another new generation of stars which would have more dust in them now dusty stars are different from normal stars and also the area around the stars you can start making planets uh, and asteroids around them so they come in like the second or third generation of stars they're more likely to come in the second or third generation of stars. Planets or asteroids are a much later thing. They won't be there in the early universe. Okay, now there's another question on, uh, is there bigger things than kilonovas? Yes, there are bigger things than kilonovas, there are supernovas, but uh, for this, again, I would refer you to a really good talk by Georgie, uh, who talked about many different scales of explosion in space. So you, you would get a much more detailed answer uh, once you watch her talk 
or if you have further questions, you can again comment in the same link uh, and I will reply to you uh, at a later time. Do we know what causes dark matter? So scientists, <coughs> when they don't know what something is, they try naming it as dark matter or dark energy. It's dark and we cannot understand it. So there are some theories regarding what causes dark matter, but we don't really know uh, what it actually is. Now, there's another question. Does dark energy have a part to play in galaxy formation? I would say dark energy would prevent galaxies or new galaxies from forming because what it's trying to do is right now the entire universe is expanding faster and faster due to dark energy. So what is happening is all the galaxies that were earlier closer to each other are now moving farther and farther. The farther you look, if you look at a distant galaxy, it is accelerating away from you. It's not just moving at a constant speed, it's moving away faster and faster. So dark energy is expanding the universe so fast that after some, a few billion years, what can happen is the Milky Way will have no chance of going close to any other galaxy outside its local group. So all the galaxies near Milky Way can merge and then make another new galaxy. But because of dark energy, the universe would have expanded so much that we'll be away from everything else. Now, that's the question. Do universes come before galaxies? Yes, universes come before galaxies. First, the universe uh, formed through the Big Bang. Then we had, uh, after some time, so first everything was hot, then everything cooled down. And once everything cooled down, they started, uh, uh, and there were some, the, there was some asymmetry because of which we had these dark matter webs. And in these webs, you had gas, cold gas fallen along these webs. And we started making stars where there was lots of gas. And then slowly uh, these small areas of stars and dark matter came in together. And we had lots of gas and lots of dark matter in areas called galaxies. And that's how the first galaxies came in. Okay, any more questions? If so, please type them in the comment section and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Or if you have a question uh, later as well, uh, you can still put it in the comment section and uh, we will try to get back to them. I will wait for one more minute for questions. Meanwhile, we can all watch a pretty video of zooming out from a building to a galaxy. How big is the biggest galaxy in the universe? Well, we may not have detected the biggest galaxy in the universe yet, but galaxies, unlike uh, us, let's say, don't have just one merger. They have many, many, many mergers. So as a galaxy grows older and older, many of these galaxies nearby it start merging and they make really, really big galaxies. But the thing is, they don't uh, make new stars after some time because after some time they just get rid of all the gas. So they can be really big galaxies, but they will only have red and uh, they will only have red stars. So the biggest galaxies can also occur in the center of galaxy clusters. So we looked at these big happy families of galaxies. Yeah, let me find that. Yes, 
So in the centers of these big galaxy clusters, you have uh, the biggest galaxies in the universe. They are called BCGs or brightest cluster galaxies. So they are really big, giant elliptical galaxies uh, and they come in the center of big clusters. Well, thank you everyone uh, for listening in and we had really good questions in the end. Please be online for our next talk. We'll keep on doing such online outreach events. Thank you all for listening again and bye.